Hello everyone, today we will be looking at how to create fake or dummy data. And in the end, I will also show you how to create a data validator for your custom data structures. But first, why do we need such things? Well, as a software developers, we make frequent tests and debugging. To make them as accurate as possible, it is crucial to have realistic data representations. So, first I will show you how to do that on a Node.js project, but after that, we will move on to more generalized approaches such as embedding the fake data generator into an HTML document, which is the best programming language ever made. But anyway, let's get started and hop into the VS Code. As you can see, we are on an empty directory. So let's initialize our node project by npm init y command. This will initialize the project with the default values. Then we create an entry file named index.js and this is where we will be writing our code. After doing that, we go ahead and install the faker.js, which is the fake data generator package that we will be using. We install it by using the npm install faker command. Once that's done, we are ready to generate our data. However, before doing that, let's look at what type of data that we can generate. According to the Faker documentation, we can generate data in following areas. Address, commerce, company, database, date, bank, finance, git, hacker, helpers, image, internet, forum, name, phone, random, system, time, unique, and vehicle. As you can see, the list of things that we can generate is absolutely massive, which is pretty amazing. So, let's look at how we can use it. First, we include Faker inside our project by adding the line const faker require faker. Now we are ready to create dummy variables or dummy structures. For example, a bank account object. Let's create it by var bank account. Now we can fill it with fake data. Let's say that our account has an holder. The holder must be a person, so we need a prefix and a name. To get a prefix, we can use faker.name.prefix. And to get a full name, we can use faker.name.findName. We can also get them individually by using the first name and last name methods. Then let's create an account type. To get a random account type, we can call faker.finance.accountName. After that, we obviously need amount of money and type of currency that our account will have. So we can easily do that by using faker.finance.amount and faker.finance.currency symbol methods. Then we need an IBAN number to receive the money and we can add that by using the faker.finance.ivan method. But unlike the previous methods that we have used, let's give it a parameter. It takes a boolean as an argument and it basically means formatting. So when we give it true, it should format IBAN in a such a much more readable way basically. Then we can maybe add the account creation date, which is done by using the faker.date.passed method. We have used the past because we assume that the account was already created. Anyway, now comes the interesting part, adding a credit card. Let's just add a credit card object real quickly and start filling that out. The card obviously needs to have a few properties like number, CVV and expiration date. So let's add them. Starting off its number. We can create a number by using faker.finance.creditcard. And the cool part is that we can give an issuer to it. In this example, let's give Visa. We will verify that in a minute. Then we can give CVV by using the faker.finance.creditcardcvv method. And finally, the expiration date. You may have remembered that the expiration date is formatted in the month and the year format. So we can do that by first adding the month using faker.date.future.getMonth and then the year by using the faker.date.future.getFullYear and we just convert it to, to string and take the substring minus 2. We use the substring minus 2 method because we only want the last two digits of the year. Anyway, now let's look at how it works. So, we just quickly put out our object into a console.log statement. And once we have executed that, as you can see, all of the set values are there. As you can see, we individually set every single object one by one for our required use case. However, there are more generic approaches built into the faker package. For example, if we want to create a sample business card object, we can easily do that by using the faker.helpers.createCard method. And once we have logged that, as you can see, it's created a detailed object which includes many fields. So that's nice as well. 
Now we can leave that out and our bank account object as well for a minute to check out how we can use Faker on an HTML file. So let's create a new HTML file named faker.html. Then we add our boilerplate code. After we have done that, we grab the browser embed code from the Faker's official page. However, we need to tweak it a little bit. Since we have already installed the npm package, we will go into it and grab the relative path of the minified version of faked from the dist directory. Then we paste it as a source. Then we move that to the head section. After that, we create empty h1 element in our body and give header as an ID. Next, we just change our script on body to document.getElementById and feeding header to it dot inner text and that equals to faker dot name dot find name. That way when we open up the page our header will contain a randomly generated name. Also you may have recognized that we don't set up any server or something like that. We just test it from the bare HTML document. So let's open up our HTML file by typing dot slash faker dot HTML in our console. As you can see we got a name which shows us that it is working properly and whenever we refresh the page we get a different name which is really cool as well. Now we can go back into our bank account example. If you have remembered at the beginning of this video I said that I will be making a custom validator for our objects. So let's do that now. First we need a package named validator. We can quickly install it by using the npm i validator command. But be aware that the validator has capital V. There is also a lowercase version and that is amazing package as well but for this purpose we will be using the uppercase version. Anyway, once the installation was done we can include that in our project by const validator equals require validator. Now we can create our validator. In this example I will be creating a validator to check that if it's a valid visa card or not but the logic can be expanded easily. At that point we can create a new object named visa validator and we can start giving parameters which are the exact same parameters that we have used in our credit card object. Now we can specify the rules. The rules which are based upon the Laravel rules which you can find it from the resources down below in the description as well. And those rules are basic checking measures that we will be using on the various aspects of our object. Anyway, if we want to make sure that a parameter exists, we can give the required as a rule. So we give each field a required rule. Then since we want to check for visa, we need to understand what property does visa cards have. And that is they all start with the number 4. So we can add this simple rule by using the regular expressions. To combine it with the previous required rule, we can use the pipe operator followed by the regex rule. Then we put colon and give our expression. It is not that difficult. Great, so now we have the rule. To apply that rule to our object, we create a new variable and then we call the make command inside the validator package. This method takes two parameters. First one is the object to test and the second one is the rule. So we just give those like so. After that, we can check if our object passes the validation by using the passes method from our newly defined variable. We can also check the failure scenario by using the fails method, but in this example I will be checking the passing case. To see it more easily, let me just put it into a lock statement. So, when I've executed that, as you can see, it passes the test. However, when I remove the visa flag from our credit card object and check it again, as you can see, it failed. And this is how we can create custom validators and use fake data. And I hope you have enjoyed it and find it somewhat useful. If that is the case, make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing to see more content like this. See you next time. Take care.